we had a few days of rehearsal and then we shot it about seven times. Uh, the honorable mention goes to our Steadicam operator because he did not have rehearsal with us and on day of shoot he shows up and we have to teach him the entire route. Hey friends, it's your girl Emily Girl, and right now we're here at our iHeart Radio studios in New York City hanging out with our artist Jason Mraz. Can we give it up for Jason? Hey, uh, we're in our little backstage studio. I'll clap for me. <laughs> we're happy to have you, Jason. Thanks, Emily. How are you feeling? I feel like a lot of life has happened for you recently. Thank you. Yes, surprisingly a lot of life has happened for me. Let's start with the music aspect of it. So right. you have your eighth studio album, and let me get this correct. Mystical, Magical, Rhythmical, Radical Ride. Nailed it. What a title. Thanks. Let's start with that. All right. Tell it, me about the title. Well, I think it just describes life. I w I'm constantly mystified by life. I don't know why we're here. I don't know what the purpose of all this is. In some ways, it's just beautiful and perfect. In other ways, it's just terrifying and so weird and backwards. I think the purpose of the title is just to remember to tune your awareness to really be grateful and enjoy the ride. Such a precious time we get here in this life. It's also a musical album. so. I want people to sing along and have fun, and why not start with the album title to be quite musical as well? It's, yeah, it's like a warm up to the rest of the record. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Well, it was so interesting. I got to chat with your team right before this, and they were telling us a fun fact. This is kind of a full circle project because who you produce the album with, sure. you've worked with before. Yeah, I think being this far down in um, the creative process, I can sort of handpick my favorite people from all the years that I've been making music. So my band is a collaboration from 15 years of friendship. So we wrote these songs together. Um, producer Martin Tereffe, who I made probably my biggest album with, We Sing, We Dance, We Steal Things. And he and I have been friends for almost 20 years. And we always get together every once in a while and write songs. But it just so happened that he was free while my band and I were working on these songs. And he just kind of slid in as producer, you know, it was, which was really great because we didn't go around and vet producers. It just happened naturally that, oh, that he kind yeah. of came into the that's mix. Amazing. And then other players like Molly Miller on guitar, Grooveline Horns, um, David Davidson Strings out of Nashville, um, are all people that have been on my records before. So this was a bit of just a party reunion, you know, and, and where we're sitting right now um, on an independent record company, you know, we don't have a committee or an a and r team like looking over our shoulder and telling us what not to do mm. so we just get to have fun and and make anything we want that's nice yeah it was great yeah so for you i mean like you said you're no stranger to, to making music being a musician and artist like what is the most fulfilling part of making an album like this one for you there's so many steps along the way um every step kind of has like equal parts joy, you know. Obviously the inception of a song is very cosmic, very, you know, cathartic. It's very um, mystical because you're, you're being a witness to something coming through, you mm -hmm. know, coming through the musicians, coming through your voice. And, you know, if it's done right at the end of the day, you, you know, there's this invisible thing that everyone kind of agrees on and we can recreate it with our music, but it's still like, um, you know, you woke up and it was silent and you go to bed and you have this sound that mm. rings in your ears, you know? So yeah. I love that part. I love writing music. Uh, but then recording is a fun challenge, you know, to kind of figure out the right tempo and the, how it all glues together. And, and you recorded in New York, right? A studio in New York, yeah. part of it? First yeah. time I ever recorded an album in New York City. Oh, really? Yeah. Did I it just, feel different? It vary. And at this point in my life, that's what I'm out trying to do, is have new experiences. Yeah. Like, I don't want to repeat myself. So I want to write songs that I've never written before. I want to record in ways I've never recorded. Well, um, aside from music news, I also want to talk to you a little bit about your personal life because uh -oh. you've, <laughs> you've been sharing a little bit more with us, especially with your journey of being a part of the LGBTQ plus community. Sure. Why was that important to share with your fans and with your community? You know, I've, I've always been an ally and a lot of my friends came out young. Um, and I just was a bit of a late bloomer and hadn't had that many experiences. And like I just said, I'm, I'm yeah. always looking to have new experiences. <laughs> new experiences, yeah. And I had a few new experiences and I, it kind of like blew my mind and my heart wide open. So um, I kind of, I'm, I'm a B right now on that LGBTQ lineup. Yeah. Um, I don't know where I'll end up. Yeah, I was going to say, I love the rainbow, by the way. I noticed that right when you came in. Thanks. Thing. You know, a little representing in the month of June. Yeah, but I know this may air later, but you know, every month is Pride Month, according yeah. to RuPaul. You're so right. Yeah. Uh, I feel like, too, making any sort of, you know, changes in your life or, you know, being open about something, it's different, I feel like, 
in a public space, right? You're a very public figure. You're going to have a lot of people. How was it like to navigate that, you know, in a, in a public sphere? I wouldn't say I'm a very public person, but we are on camera right now. <laughs> yeah, you yeah. are and I are. Um, I've tried to remain somewhat private, um, but um, I'm, I'm navigating it now for the first time. Yeah. You know, I, I think in many ways, because I grew up maybe on a conservative street, you know, like certain bullies in my neighborhood and mm -hmm. hearing jokes as a kid, mm -hmm. it, it scared me from really following my heart or being vocal about certain experiences. Mm -hmm. Uh, but the older I got and the more, you know, rallying of a community there, there is, um, I felt more comfortable and compelled to sort of open up about my experiences and... And share that, yeah. Yeah, and share that and hope to have more. Yeah, and yeah. you know, as a songwriter, when you look back on, on music that you've released before, did the songs take on different meanings or can you oh, look yeah. back? Oh, really? Oh, for sure, yeah. I mean, it happens no matter, no matter what. Where like, you are in life. Or, where, yeah. I, where I'm in life, like <laughs> suddenly you can just wake up one day and feel completely different about a lyric. And, and it goes both ways. Some days you wake up and go, I now understand that song. Because songs sometimes are written so quickly, and in other times I'll look back and go, ooh, that's cringy, and I don't want to sing that anymore. Oh, that's because so Because I wrote it when I was maybe in my early 20s and didn't quite have the perspective that I have now. So yeah. It does happen, but, um, but those songs are already kind of on the fringe, you know, luckily. My set list is usually, you know, my more popular streaming songs, you know, so I tend to stay there anyway. I gotta ask you too, because like, of course, like you have songs like I'm Yours that are still so popular. Are they still fun for you to play live? Like, oh, absolutely. Do they ever get old? No. no. I'm just tickled that I get to be associated with these songs. Yeah. You know, it's so cool. Um, I wrote I'm Yours so fast. And I write songs all the time, but I don't always write them down and record them. I just love to improvise music. And mm -hmm. I'm Yours was one of those songs. I just improvised it one day, but I was, I'm so grateful to my former self. It was in 2004, actually, who like, you know, sang that song and then, oh, I, I better write this down. This is cute. Could have easily slipped by. Yeah. Where's the funniest place you've heard I'm Yours or like one of your more popular songs? Well, I hear I'm Yours. Everywhere. As I was gonna say, I was getting uh, my nails done yesterday. I heard it. Nice. In the grocery store. I'll always get um, a text from someone who's on vacation in some remote part of the world. <laughs> you know, some little village up in the Himalayas or some island somewhere. And sure enough, there's somebody sitting there playing I'm Yours at the little tiki bar or something. I yeah. love it. Um, I also want to ask you about your song, I Feel Like Dancing, specifically the music video. Okay. Which was, it was so cool to see. It was so inclusive. It was so fun to watch. Thanks. Tell me about the creative behind the video. I don't really enjoy making music videos. You don't? I don't. I guess you do so many things that you're like, that one's kind of lower uh, on the list. Yeah. Um, also because, like I said earlier, the, a song is kind of invisible. Mm. And also a song can mean so many different things to so many different people. And I, I worry that if I make a video, it's going to put an image and a story to the song and says, this is what it is. Oh, instead of letting people interpret it. Instead so of you're letting okay. it be free. So I've tried in this album and of, as of late just to make videos that are more just performance based. And so we came up with this idea to do a one shot video through a space. Campy Country Club let us film there. We had a few days of rehearsal and then we shot it about seven times. Uh, the, Honorable mention goes to our Steadicam operator because he did not have rehearsal with us. And on day of shoot, he shows up and we have to teach him the entire route and who he has to point his camera at, at which line and how. And, you know, doors are slamming in his face and people are cutting him off. And it just, it took all day to make sure our camera operator That is happy wild. Seven safe. times through. Which time, do you know which take you ended up using? I mean, we probably did it about 20 and we filmed it about seven. Oh. And we used the last take, the seventh take. The last yeah. take, wow. Because every time there was something that was just a little off and we're like, let's go one more time. Like we we're one losing more. the light. Let's go. <laughs> Yeah. You also had, I wanted to say, um, Ian Paget is in the videos in yeah. the TikTok stars, which I was excited to see. Yeah. Had some cool cameos. Yeah, I think I got to dip Ian Paget. Yeah, he's wonderful. <laughs> Ian, if you're watching, we love that dip, okay? Yes, we did. <laughs> um, well, Jason, we're so excited for all the new music. And last thing I want to mention is you're about to kick off tour. Yes, Tell us tour. about the tour. Uh, making a lap around the U.S., uh, which is always exciting. I'm so grateful that I get to stand on a stage in front of thousands of people and sing these songs. Um, you know, I think when you have a performance of any kind, the audience is giving you their greatest wealth, which is their time. 
And so we show up with total gratitude and aware of that enormous privilege. And we, we try to just give the love right back to the peeps. So yeah, we'll be I all around that. the U.S. this summer. We're Ending so actually here in New York City. Oh. Uh, out at Forest Hill Stadium in Queens with the New York Pops. Oh, nice. Which will be really lovely. So oh, that's going to be amazing. stellar band that night. Oh, okay. Well, we will all be here. Our, our crew will yeah. support. Jason, cool. thank you so much for being here. So Thanks. great to see you. Can we go to one more time for Jason in our studio? Yes. Thank you, everyone. <laughs> and thank you all for watching. Make sure you stream all of Jason Raz's music on iHeartRadio. And we'll see you next time. Thanks so much for watching. Did you like that video? You can check out more over here and don't forget to subscribe to iHeart right here. And if you're already a longtime fan, make sure you ring the bell down below so you don't miss a single video. See you next time.